Hi, <clears throat> I'm Bruce, and uh, welcome to my Baptronics lab here in Colorado. Today I'm looking at a B&K Precision Model 881 ESR and DCR in-circuit capacitance tester. What this unit does is it allows you to uh, test either in or out of circuit the DC resistance and then the equivalent series resistance of capacitors in the range of about 0.47 to about 2200 microfarads. And these are the uh, the most significant problem sources, uh, particularly in power supplies and so on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate on some of the capacitors that I pulled out of a WaveTech 1002 uh, using this, this meter. And then uh, some of the capacitors that I checked in my uh, my parts boxes here, my parts bins, and uh, we'll see how the unit works. Well, let's start off with here. We've got a um, oops, Mallory uh, 1250 microfarad 50 volt DC cap. This was pulled out of the WaveTech. It was part of the power supply. So if I put my uh, leads, okay. And what we see is that we are reading about 1.5 ohms of resistance. But for a 1250 microfarad capacitor, we should be right down here. And uh, we should be reading about 0.1 ohm, and that's about as all it says. If it's over 0.1 ohm, then it considers it bad. We were reading 1.5 ohms, which puts it right up in here. And if you come to 1250, you can see we're we're quite a ways up here. So definitely, uh, this one's a bad one. Let's take a look at the uh, sister to it. And uh, whoops, what we see here is 0.8 ohms. Still. We're eight levels above where we should be, so no good. Okay, here, <clears throat> here we have a 100 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. Came out of the uh, WaveTech. And we're going to try and catch both leads here. Whoa, I'm reading about 10 ohms, maybe 12. A 100 microfarad capacitor would put us right down in here and we should be reading no more than about 0.4 ohms and then if you're between 0.5 and 1.2 you're in the questionable category and then you become bad but we're up around 12 we're definitely bad so that one's out let's take a look at this one another 100 microfarad capacitor out of that same unit and this one we don't get anything. We're so high that it's not even registering on this unit. Try another one. Same here. Not registering. And here we have a 50, I think. 50 microfarad. 50 volt. Same thing in this case. Not even getting a reading. So those are out of it. Let's take a look at uh, this is a 2200 microfarad uh, 35 volt capacitor came out of my box. Let's take a look at it. All right, we got a light right down here at 0.1, so it's the lowest level, 2200. That's exactly what I would need to consider that a good, a good capacitor. Now let's look at this other 2200 here that came out of my box. Never been used. It's not been soldered or anything. And I'm seeing 0.3. So I'm seeing three times the resistance, and it puts me definitely in the solid red here. So 
I'm going to consider that a bad one, even though it's never been used in my inventory. Same thing here. Point three. So those are bad. Here's a 2.2 um, microfarad, 450 volt capacitor. We're reading about 4 ohms. 2.2 should be good up at 3. Uh, 3.54, you're, you're two levels into the questionable, so they consider this one a questionable one. Here's another 2.2, 450. Reading about 10 ohms. 10 ohms up here. Uh, 2.2 is in that column. We are right against the bad, so I'm going to consider that definitely a bad one. Eight ohms. We're down a level uh, in the 2.2, approaching mid, but it's on the high side of mid. Questionable. I'm not going to use it. It's out of here. Ten. That's a bad one. It's another two point two four fifty. Twelve, right in the red. No good. Another twelve. So we get the idea here. Oh, that's 20. 20 ohms, definitely. Sorry, capacitor. And my last 2.2 here to check, let's see. Oh, about 30. So, so I've already made, uh, made use of this unit. Uh, I've gone through my capacitors, my electrolytics, made sure I've got good ones on stock. Um, I went through my wave tech, pulled out a whole bunch of bad parts out of the wave tech. I'm in a process of repairing it. These are my bad ones out of my stock. So, well, the main thing to remember, and the best advice I can give you when using this successfully, is that the uh, is that the tweezers are um, not extremely wide. So. If you're trying to measure from one end to the other of an axial capacitor of any size, you've got a problem there. So then the trick is to take a look on the printed circuit board and try and find uh, spots on the printed circuit where both ends of that capacitor get close enough that you can bridge it with the from you know with the tweezers from one uh, one part of the circuit uh, to the other. And uh, then you can successfully, you know, maneuver around the uh, the board. Um, once they're off of the board, there's a number of things you can do to test the components. Like, you know, if you're working with uh, stuff out of your your box, then you just bend the leads until you can bridge it. Um, if you want to check out one that you're pretty sure measured bad, but your your leads are short and they're wide apart, then you solder a piece of wire on the one and bring it around to the other so you can bridge it across with this thing. So that's the uh, the one caveat and, and the one negative I found about it. If you were working on uh, <clears throat> surface mounted stuff I imagine this wouldn't be much of a problem and uh, and with the way circuits are getting miniaturized these days uh, you're gonna have fewer and fewer problems bridging those capacitors uh, uh, with the tweezers. But uh, on a lot of the uh, uh, vintage equipment that I like I work with, and uh, it'd be nice to have something a little larger. The unit uh, I've seen selling anywhere from roughly a uh, hundred bucks up to about uh, two hundred, somewhere in there. Um, so I'm a very competitive price. It's in very good shape. 
runs uh, off of batteries and uh, you can also get a charger for it. This one doesn't have a charger, it doesn't come with it. Uh, the instruction manual here will give you instructions on how to use it and um, its specifications. Uses one 9 volt battery and, um, and uses a 9 volt DC 150 milliamp AC adapter. So there we go. So uh, you've seen it working. Happy bidding. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you again.